One in five suffer. Erase the stigma. Brain difference is not a crime. Mental health isn't just your problem. It's our problem. And now, Mental Health Mondays with Marla and Dave. Welcome Welcome to to Mental Mental Health Health Mondays Mondays with Marla and Dave. I happen to be Dave. And Dave has uh, happened to be late giving me some information that I need. <laughs> and so I'm Marla receiving information. And late I'm also late giving Tony some information. Got it? Tony right, doesn't it. even want your information. Tony's he on the ball. We want to remind you guys right at the top of the show to text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 818 698 one zero two one a dollar today keeps the stigma away. That's our campaign. We need your support. Oh man, if you guys didn't catch last week's show, you really missed it. And if you've been living under a rock, you might not know the name Ricky Minor. But for the rest of the universe, everybody knows who Ricky Minor is. Oh man, we had a great show last week. He's an extraordinary bass player, director, composer, producer. He's an author. His book is called "There's No Traffic on the Extra Mile." He's been musical director for a host of celebrities, Whitney Houston, Christina Aguilera, Ray Charles, Alicia Keys, Beyonce, and many more. Uh, Man, he has been nominated for 13 Primetime Emmy Awards, and he's won two. And the list of his accolades could go on forever. We can just forever. do the whole show. I don't have enough just, fingers. I've already just gone around listing three his times. credits. But the credit that means most to Marla and I is he's one of our great friends. Uh, one of the few friends that we have an extremely long term relationship here in this town we call Hollywood. Man, and he's been dropping nuggets. Last week, he gave us so much gold uh, that we're going to leave the show and go straight to the bank. We we're going to be talking. <laughs> I would it's, I would seriously encourage everybody to please go back and review episode one. The information and the conversation that we're having with Ricky is one that must be revisited. But for now, put your seatbelts on. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Mental Health Mondays with Marla and Dave and NAMI San Fernando Valley believe it doesn't take much to make life a little better for our neighbors, co-workers, friends, our family members, even our children who suffer with mental illness. When you support our A Dollar Today Keeps the Stigma Away campaign, you are doing your part to erase the stigma surrounding mental illness. For just one dollar today... Or a dollar a day for one week, just $7, we can look forward to a future that does not include the unfortunate and uncomfortable stares, bullying, and the subsequent isolation that our loved ones who suffer with brain differences deal with. Text the word GIVE, that's G I V E, to 818 698 1021 to donate. A dollar today keeps the stigma away. Brought to you by Mental Health Mondays with Marlon Dave and Nami San Fernando Valley. We welcome back to Mental Health Mondays the great Mr. Ricky Miner. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it coming. <laughs> he has such a TV cued response. It's perfect. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Ricky, uh, like we said in the intro la- uh, last week, you really were just dropping nuggets of gold. And did we did we miscalculate one of your? Yeah, I think that. You guys do what you normally do, which you can see in the future. And I have 12 nominations, but I think I'm going to have 13. (laughs) Here it comes. Here it comes. I'm going to take 13 or, 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 you know, 15, 16. Or 15 or 16. 16, Well, Ricky, if it was up to me, then you have your 13th. Oh, this is a bottle of water. Emmy (laughs) coming up for sure, without a shadow of a doubt. You definitely are worthy. Um, Okay, so we were having a conversation. Man, again, Thank you just for just just emoting and sharing yeah. your truth. And because I've known you for so long, I know that our friend as well and your first wife, Karen, passed mm-hmm. away. Yeah. But you guys, there was there was definitely an uh, you came to a point where as friends, you b- revealed that there was a diagnosis with Karen and mental health. And I guess one of the one of the questions that I specifically want to ask is when you have a family history or when you deal with things that are traumatic and off-center do you think that that sets you up in life 
to, to think that the that the abstract in behavior is normal? Like, did you deal with that? I, I, I don't think that anyone who experiences any uh, trauma in their life, I, I don't think there's a, there's a situation where in your mind you're going to validate and say, that well, this is common or this is appropriate. Mm-hmm. So I think that we're not equipped to deal with our own uh, trauma and emotions, and we're definitely not uh, experienced enough to deal with someone else's. So mm. it starts out, I think, being moody. I'm moody, or mm. I'm not in a good mood, right? And then it becomes to to anger, and it can get violent. And I don't mean just uh, violence against someone else, but to you know, people want to hurt themselves, right? Yeah. Because they just don't want to be in this body. Like, I don't like what I'm feeling in this body, mm-hmm. and I, I really don't know what to do. So the best thing I can do is lash out. And I remember, you know, some of the trauma that Karen felt based on her uh, her life with her dad being in the military mm-hmm. and traveling and growing up in Germany mm. and in and, and Montana and Utah, mm. all the cold places, and being the only black girl uh, around or one of few. Mm-hmm. And so that can do something to your psyche to where you just don't think you're good enough. You don't and feel you're, valued. You're, yeah, you're, you're, you know, I mean, you have, you're worthless. You're dark. Inside. Yeah. You're mm. dark, and this dark is not in. Right. Not in here, not in the yeah. snow where, where, you know. So other kids are mean, and they don't understand. So uh, they start, you know, teasing you about your hair, about your skin, about all things. And so I think that carrying that, and I remember her saying, you know, as a kid, she felt she had to get them before they got hurt. Right. Wow. So you have to you have to be hard, you know, mm. on them. A little self preservation. Yeah. So so yeah. so I, and I know what kind, you just mentioned in when we talked to you in the last episode about the responsibility that you carried. So I, I we already know what your heart is. Yeah. How hard was that to level yourself to finally be able to heal and make a difference that you understood for you that you couldn't save her either. Like, yeah, well, you know, and that it goes, you know, again, I, I have this disease to please mm-hmm. that I had mm-hmm. and that's gone now. Uh, but during that time, I wanted to to help ease that pain. And it's hard when you see someone you love who's in pain. Yeah. And, you know, and you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And mm-hmm. everyone out there listening knows that you when you realize that you actually don't have what it takes to pull them out mm. and you see them drowning and you got your arm in and you're like, Wait a minute! I'm leaning too far in. I'm about to go down myself. Go down this treacherous road. Yeah. So I, but I think that, again, there's power in letting go. There's kindness, and you can still be kind mm-hmm. and also uh, have healthy boundaries mm-hmm. and say, okay, I understand you're angry, but let's find another time to talk because this this conversation is not helping either one of us. I can't help you, and where you are right now, I'm definitely not qualified. So let's see what. I'm here to help you as much as I can. Right. Yeah. But if it's I'm, beyond your, being, right. Well, that's, not, that's something else that you said it. last week, a nugget that you dropped last week, just like when we get on a plane, uh, yeah. an, an airplane. They say, put your mask on first. Take care of yourself first yeah. before you're able to take care of somebody well, else. Well, I can. And that's what I said about, you know, where you have to, you can't pour from an empty cup. Right. Mm. So you have to make sure that you're whole right. as much as you can. And that requires spending time with yourself. And that's another thing that we avoid because we're afraid that we're going to hear the voices of, of you're not good enough, you know. Wow. You're not that great. I mean, yeah. I mean, you want to you want to play basketball. You know, you know, LeBron James, you know. Yeah. I mean, so you start, you start comparing <laughs> yourself to others. Yeah. And I've had one uh, one someone that I really uh, respected and and there were two of my heroes and I was talking to and I was talking about. Uh, conducting the Oscars, and it was Duda Mel and, uh, hmm. and and John Williams. Wow! And and they're doing the in memoriam for that year with the L.A. Phil. Hmm. So I'm at rehearsal early, and we're talking. And afterwards, Duda Mel says to John, "You know, Ricky's conducting the whole thing. It's like a it's a three hour thing. It's like on and on music, so much music and stuff." And I said, "Yeah, but I I can't do what you guys do." And yeah. he said, "We can't do what you do either." Wow! So and and, and I'm, I say that as a hmm. point of of reference where we look at someone else and we put them on a pedestal on a pedestal and and we think that that's not attainable Hmm. but again 
so wait a minute. All I have to do is be the best version of me and right. I'm good? Yeah. <laughs> right. And I'm good. I mean, I, I'm not right. them, but then right. I'm not you either. So just do your best, and your best is, is Well, there's a, saying, there's a saying that I have, and I used to teach my young girls this when I was fitness training, and I would say, you know, never measure yourself out at, with the measuring stick outside, which is comparison. Yeah. Only the measuring stick inside, yeah. because it's the only thing you'll ever measure up to. Yeah. No one can be a better version of you right. than you. I, yeah. It's impossible. But it's always so much easier to say these things no, it is, than it is. actually but, I mean, practice these things. If you, if you look things. at it, I mean, and I've, I always say that, it's whatever energy that is in the room it's never outside in it's inside out mm-hmm. you, you need to operate mm-hmm. from inside and push your love out and whatever mm-hmm. comes it can't break that wall right yeah i love it's that. true get on i the love, love that train. once again another <laughs> he said nugget. get on the love train <laughs> right but you know what and, I, and i'll share what this with with you, what you were talking about the oxygen mask one of the things that i've shared recently online based on the situations that i'm managing with my children I said it's it, and this is from 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 parents to children. Yeah. I said it's a it was my it was an instinct for me as a mother when I saw my child in the deep end drowning to just immediately instinctually I jumped in. Right. Until I realized, "Oh my god. Can I we, swim?" No, we can both swim. I'm the I knew I was the stronger swimmer, that's right. why I jumped in to save. Right. However, the fight in the water right. with someone who and this is an adult who doesn't want to be saved or doesn't even recognize that, that, they, that, need that they need saving. Yeah. And I realize, holy crap, I'm now to the point where I'm, this is my last little bit of energy, and I'm looking at, oh, man, we're both drowning. And I swam back to the shore, and I happened to be standing in front of my house, and there happened to be a life preserver, no joke. And I said, now I realize I needed to get on stable ground, and I'm going to throw the preserver, and you either have to take it and be pulled to safety or not, because I had to leave it in God's hands. It's their life yeah. to lose, their lose journey. or live. It's, yeah. I can't do yeah. it for you. Yeah. And that's that's a that's a very rude awakening. I mean, mm. it's, it's jarring. Yes. And uh, I, you know, I've been there before. You know, with my son, and unfortunately, he 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 took responsibility for himself, and that was the only thing that I had. I got love. But but if you take responsibility for yourself, then you'll find out that the world is it's it's endless possibilities for you. Right. Mm-hmm. And now he's living his best life and and decided to do that. But it's a decision that only they can make, and that's the hardest thing because you want to will it. You want to like lock him up yes. or, 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 or 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 just you yeah. know beat him across the head. I mean anything to wake him up. You right. Know. Throw, throw them in the, o- in, in the freezing ocean. <laughs> right. <laughs> when we come back from this break, Ricky, I'm going to tell you something actually hilarious that that, kid, that young adults who are struggling don't realize that matches that exact sentiment. Also, when we come back, we want to turn the corner and start asking the questions about music, the music business, and Ricky's matriculation, his journey through this thing we call music. Wait, hold up. Matrica who? <laughs> 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 Using the big words. You better use the big Darling, words. Darling. You better a... use the big words. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right. Uh, generalized anxiety disorder, or GAD, is diagnosed when someone has extreme persistent worries that they can't control and that don't always have a distinct cause. According to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, GAD or Generalized Anxiety Disorder affects up to 6.8 million people every year and women are twice as likely to be diagnosed than men. While mild or moderate anxiety is part of everyday life and even tied to our prehistoric survival, GAD and other anxiety disorders are characterized by anxiety that doesn't naturally ebb and flow. GAD GAD anxiety is persistent and all-consuming. Symptoms might include feeling restless, fatigue, irritability, difficulty thinking, persistent and or uncontrollable worry, increased heart rate, or even sleep problems. The Partnership Development Group says mild anxiety can be caused by anything that creates stress in your life. But the more serious uh, GAD, or again, that's generalized anxiety disorder, can be caused by any or all of the following. Trauma, illness-related stress, triggered stresses and stress buildup, personality and genetics, other mental health disorders, or even drugs or alcohol use. If you or someone you know is dealing with an abnormal amount of anxiety, please, we ask all it on Mental Health Monday, seek professional help. 
And remember that you are not alone. There is help. This message is brought to you by Mental Health Mondays with Marla and Dave. I never do anything without thinking about it first. Marla is a feeler. I basically live my personality on my scene. But when Marla did it again, it's like a match dancing with a firecracker. I just can't. Oh, we, man, we, we, we love back. our friends, but sometimes <laughs> when you have too much history, you just can't. <laughs> All right. So now before we up. jump before we jump into <laughs> into music, I think you had a little carryover question, Marla. Um, yes, except you distracted me by now I'm too going to just tune right into Ricky because I actually there's some things about his music career I want to know. So let's jump right in, man. Um, you've worked with just about every celebrity, um, not just as in your capacity as musical director, but you've pretty much, at least out here on the West Coast, you are the man for live performance when it comes to organizing and producing those shows. And like I said, you work with everyone. Give us uh, just some anecdotal stories of... Uh, I don't want to put you on the spot and say who was the funniest because I know it was me, who was the most good looking because True. here True. I am. True. Uh, <laughs> no, just joking. Tell, tell us about uh, your exploits working with all these celebrities, man. Well, I think the first thing we have to all understand is they're just like us. The same Boom. thing. Same thing. So uh, there's no... My job is to serve in yeah. this in this capacity. So how can I connect with them and get them to where they want to be? It's mm. not about like it's not it's never about me. Like mm -hmm. the 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 song that we choose or the arrangements or any of that is not for me. It's mm. what their vision is, and then how can I get them closer to that? Mm. So that uh, because the you know a genius is the person who's most like themselves. So if mm. I can help them be the best mm. version of them, then that's what you're going to get. And, and and again, I have a, a role to play in it, but it's not as big as, as, as one would think. I mean, mm. I don't think that people who do this work look at themselves like, I did, I did, mm -hmm. I did. It's like, I'm a part of that team. When right. the team wins the Super Bowl, when the team wins, mm -hmm. the team wins. Yeah. Sure, there are, are yeah. some, some key players that made a shot at a certain point or – or, or or intercepted a, 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 a you know a, 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 pass, a, a right. pass or something. There's someone who, who's who's but it takes the team. Yeah. So no one person can ever say I did. Hmm. You know. And if someone says I that they did, they're probably lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I did everything. I did really. You wait. So you sung. You loaded in the stuff. <laughs> you tuned everything. You played all the instruments. And then <laughs> you, and you and you mixed it. Oh, and wait. <laughs> And you directed it too. That person oh, sounds like, like they belong on Venice Beach on the weekend. What, uh, what, but you, but you know what? You yeah. you have so many um, lessons of life, um, you know, exhibited as well by the book. But when it comes to your impact in music, is there something else that Ricky Minor wants to do to just impact the world through your voice mm, or your craft? Good question. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm always um, so. When I was young, I think in high school, my math teacher, because, again, there are people always around to, to mm. help. Mm -hmm. And so don't just don't be afraid to ask questions and ask for help. My mm. math teacher said to me, he said um, the same thing about, you know, what you know and all of this mm -hmm. stuff. But he said, think of it like this. You need to put together a one year, three year, five year, 10 year plan and each year revisit and make sure you're doing what you want to do. And if you are doing something that you don't want to do, never let anyone make you feel that you're a quitter. For mm. changing directions. You can change your mind. It's wow. okay. It's okay to change your mind and say, I tried this and it's not for me. Right. And so you can think what you want, but you can't live my life. And so right. thank you very much. And, and, <laughs> you know? and that, stop right yeah. there. I got to look at, the, at my audience. That, that that he just said is huge. And mm. how many times have we made an agreement with ourselves in one stage or position or moment in our lives, and then we're we're afraid to make a new agreement that fits where we are at another point? Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's a very big thing. Well, it's a hard thing because 
we're human, so we seek approval. Mm -hmm. If we get approval, then we feel good about ourselves because someone approved us. Uh, but if uh, approved our our, our decisions, our mm -hmm. behavior. Mm -hmm. I had one young singer say, "Look, I, I'm a, I'm going to sing." I'm going to sing if it kills me. I said, well, you might as well go ahead and bite it. Because <laughs> you can't sing. Like, just give up this whole thing. You're, you're, you're not going to make it as a singer. I did not expect this to be the <laughs> anecdotal story, but no, okay. No, that's it. You can't do it. So, so I mean, there are a lot of things. And I, I believe that we all, all of us are great at a lot of things. There's not one thing that you're great at. You mm -hmm. could only do that one thing. So do do what you love. Explore. And, and love what you do. Yeah, I love that. Again, man. Well, yeah, I said it. Do what I, you love I, and love what you do. What you looking at? I'm, you know why I'm looking at you, Ricky? I thought Marla was Billboard, but Ricky's, Ricky's now become yeah. Billboard well, I'm going to have well. to have the Billboard off. I'm going to have to have a tagline off with Ricky. But no, I'm looking at Ricky because I was, I was sitting week. here looking in his eyes thinking, how did, when he's so grounded, how did he go through American Idol auditions? I don't know how, I, I don't know how many times I would watch man. American Idol and go, nobody told him? Like, how? Like, this is it, fodder. Well, the, the thing is that people really believe it. I mean, you know, and they That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they, were, so, they, were, they were really in. It was yeah, real. But, you you know, know, to give us the inside scoop. Do some of those people, uh, for the audition process, is that just for television? Because, I mean, those people yeah. are really bad sometimes. So when I did the show, I wasn't around generally for the audition. Uh, okay. gotcha. And that was done the, by the, the judges, show. and they were on I tour. Gotcha. Right, right, right. By the time they got to me. But there are some that, you know, where... Where and and I say said in the book, which I haven't referenced the book in well, you know, uh, ten ten years or so. But <laughs> there's a place where I said I had to have a talk with a group of them and say, there's going to come a time when your ego passes your talent, and for some of you, that's happened already. <laughs> so I suggest um, I suggest no night. no I'm say, I suggest that. Um, <laughs> I, I suggest you do what Stevie Wonder and Whitney Houston and Beyonce and on and on do, and just say thank you, Mr. Minor. <laughs> yeah. So, so there's I, you're I welcome. I, I don't need a response back from that. This right, is, right. This, this is, is a fact, and and yeah. of course, and listen, it's quite natural. I mean, I'm not like dogging them. It's quite right. natural that mm -hmm. you go from zero to hero in one episode. Yeah, you know, you're, you're at home That's singing in, in your in your bedroom, and now you're on TV, and everyone's Lights, voting for you. Lights, cameras, action, yeah, and everyone's you know, everyone's saying you're amazing, you're amazing. But truth be told, you're not where you're going to be. So understand that it's a process. Yeah. It's a mm. process. Like I'm, I'm not dogging them. It's a process. No, you got to, you know, I mean, an ego. You know. The, the the acronym ego itself is edging God out. Wow. That it's not about about God. It's about you. I'm gonna have to study up. Yeah. <laughs> Take notes. It's gonna be a because quiz I'm next gonna, week. Yeah, because I'm gonna have to so I now, used to be now, the now, queen of with tag. All I'm after that you, you've Ricky. accomplished in music, <laughs> um what's next for you? Well, I, I think I same thing. So back to my plan, my one year five year, it. ten year. One three five ten. One three five ten. Yeah. So I, I'm always assessing, and now I'm creating uh, content that I, that I have IP that I own and that I produce and executive produce, and so that's where my team is at. Mm -hmm. and And I'll still do the shows that I want to do, mm -hmm. but there are things that I want to do, and that's that's you know important to me to not only shape and some have to do with with uh, youth and underserved and and mm. shows that that not only shine the spotlight on it but give them an opportunity mm. uh and a through line for for what's next for them because mm. that's what's important for me uh, i think that james ingram once said to me you serve so you deserve and you deserve all d d deserve deserve, yes. deserve, yes. deserve yes. all that's coming to you you serve so you deserve and so he's like you deserve it and so with those things they'll come responsibility and so you don't get it. It wasn't given you for you. It was right. given to so you can pass it on. Wow! If, if you hold on to it, then you're not you're not letting it breathe. Somebody's preaching on today. All right. So we'll be right back um, in a minute. And you know, Marla, don't let us down. We kind of started off lackluster I last week. I mean, first, you know, I'm already trying to balance up from the Roe versus Wade thing, and now you, I'm in here dancing. Like, I feel like... Uh... Okay. <laughs> uh, well. That's your pole dance. <laughs> 
Last week, we asked the question, what percentage of young people ages 6 through 17 experience a mental health disorder each year? Your options were 8%, 12%, or 17%. And Ricky, what did you answer, sir? He said 17. 17. And, Whatever. Um, He's right. He's right yet again. So uh, let me he, see if I can stump the Ricky one more time. Along with some others is batting a thousand. Let me, let me try to stump Ricky. Here we go. Right. Ricky, what percentage of adults experience serious mental illness each year? Last week we talked about kids. Now it's about adults. 3%? No. Or eight, oh, 2%, First of 5%. All, read. Okay. Shh. 2%? I can't read this this faded out percentage. 2%, 5%, or 8%? I'll ask the question again. What percentage of adults experience serious mental illness each year? 2%, 5%, or 8%? Eight. Okay, well, okay, we're so to we find can't out tell you this week if, if Ricky, you're still batting 1,000. If a Ricky thousand. batted 1,000 consistently, but he'll have to show up next week to see if you are the star that we have placed upon your head, sir. Remember to text the word <laughs> GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 818-698-1021. Support our A Dollar Today Keeps the Stigma Away campaign. Back to the show. All right, so as usual, time flies. When you're when having, we're having fun. fun. We miss you, Ricky. We haven't seen you in... We showed up at, at, the, at the Paul Simon... Tribute, tribute yeah. and there you were in all your glory ricky is this he's his own show for the record in case <laughs> no one knows if if you go to a show get there early if ricky has anything to do with it because ricky is his own inner he's a ball of entertainment you are now let me ask you something rick uh all the times that i've known you the first thing you do when someone comes up especially in one of those situations where there's going to be a lot of celebrities there you you have jokes like this. Do, do you just sit at home and work on your, you know, have a little book that you got all your jokes in? Or is he's that free. just always he's spontaneous? Free to be, he's free to be him. <laughs> now, I mean, it's really important for me. If I can't laugh, then I'm out. Like, mm. it's not, like, life's too short to, yeah. be, to be joyful, happy, and laughing, and really enjoy each other. And so... I don't, you know, I don't go to well, put down or, you know. Let me, tell you, let me tell you how you know it's authentic. I, I'm going to give you guys a tip. Ricky's jokes are never, ever, ever one-liners. Meaning Ricky doesn't give one-liners. I thought you were going to say funny, but no. Well, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and, and, and thank and you. Brr. Very nice to see everyone. And thank you so much. It's been nice being here. And I'm taking away the rights. You'll never see this. Tape because I'm taking away all rights. I've signed nothing. And remember, oh, don't sign anything until you see the final product. Trust me. Hilarious. No, I, that's real though. I, what is so? It comes from inside of you. And I, what I notice is you're just an authentic. It's always yeah. organic with Indeed. you. Period. You, you know, you don't just run out there and you know. No, I've told you, I'm I'm funny, I'm handsome, you know, I'm all the things. <laughs> Hello. Tony, Hello. can we kill the can we kill the rest of the kill the mic? <laughs> can we unplug him? No, oh, really. Man. On a serious tip. So you know what? We just I have to say that we appreciate you've impacted. Indeed. Obviously, our production crew was here, and this is the first time she's like. Can, can she I take dropped it? the camera, she, dropped she her phone. She couldn't hold her phone up. I was like, what? <laughs> it's Ricky. It, no, it's all about who you pay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I pay to have fans. You got to keep the learner, okay? <laughs> Oh, man. Well, Rick, man, we appreciate do you. Have a, do, you, you. Have a, do you have another? Let me tell you this. Two things. We, we're we going to be calling on you to join us on a, on a social level. When I say social, on our campaign, as we keep Dave and I growing our foundation, your conversation just on a speaking level. I don't know if you plan to do another book. I would suggest that you do. Um, because I think that, you know, your life travels through so many different places and you just pick up you're like a wisdom sponge that is genuine and i think that it's refreshing because i think when people look at who you are and what you do like dave asked you people admire and see a celebrity scenario in their mind as the pinnacle of all things but what you've done is brought levity to just the humanness of talent and you know all of the focuses that we need to really just be our best selves and and that's everybody. That's the goal for it's everybody. It's a universal message. Yeah. And I used to say to the, I speak to little kids, I would go to schools and speak. And one year I, I, f I would focus on a theme and one year it was fame. And I said to them, you know, fame is a reputation for being excellent, the best at what you do. 
and and you know other than that it's infamy but right. you know you get what I'm saying so that so that's that's essentially what you're saying and that applies to everybody yeah well, I, I remember working with uh, Patty Austin mm-hmm. I love and her. and she said uh, well you know Ricky you you go from being uh, who's Patty Austin to get me Patty Austin mm. to get me a young Patty Austin <laughs> wow to Who's, Who's Patty, Patty Austin? Austin? Right. Yeah, <laughs> right back where you started. Right back where you started. So, <laughs> so don't get caught up in in right. any of that of who knows you and and people go like you know I want to I want to work with this person that person is it's not who you know right it's who knows you yeah right yeah you know you could know Quincy Jones but if he doesn't know you then you don't What's get that call yeah you, know? mm. you don't get the call so let your work speak right you don't have to always go out and 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 that's a, that's I think that's some of the the challenges at least right now with the you know with the social media stars mm. and people mm. who, because because you you don't you know you you're you're not called upon to really deliver in real time so you know and and as they say anyone can be charming on a long distance call so if you're that far away from someone and you're not face to face delivering the product it's hard to to see what's real mm-hmm. i don't know i mean a lot of times I look, I don't know what's real or not. And, but then when the person comes there to actually sing, you know, you find out that, well, there's, there's uh, her mother that actually sang. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, never, hey, look, you never know. I'm not hitting on anybody. Right. Mrs. Right. Spinelli. You know? right. um, but you mine. know what, Ricky? Again, we thank you. Uh, your, your wisdom that you have shared is invaluable, man. And... Um, Thanks for sharing your your live journey with us. You've uh, we've we're, our, our our paths did this, and I'm just glad that we can still be associated to walk in a parallel. Fashion. One of the yeah. things we have known and grown accustomed to expect from you is greatness. So we know you got a lot more left in the mm-hmm. tank, man. Looking forward yeah, yeah. to to the future. Yeah, and, and by the way, and when it's over, I'm good. Don't cry for me, Argentina. Yeah, <laughs> and I was gonna ask you, you know, do, no. are plans of retirement ever in? No, your... no, I'm just saying when when life. When, when when life is over, when oh, when yeah. when this life is over as we know it. Yeah, I mean, you've lived. Oh man, gave it your you all. Lived. Yeah, yeah, and and and, and I, I re- and I receive, you know, because hmm. you you get what you give. There's no yeah. secret. Right. Again, there you go. Give it all away. Ooh, and he even <laughs> ended with a tag. There Ooh, you go. I'm Our guest taking my has tag been back. The great Ricky Minor uh, and the wise Ricky Minor. He shares so much and with you know us. What? Thank you, man. We, it yeah, won't indeed. be the last. Be Dave and I, the Loving Beyond Reason and Mental Health Monday. There's events that are coming up. We will, you will, we will absolutely have to invite Ricky to do something with us on on a, a level to bring people together. You better pickleball, y'all. Yeah, for sure. Do you play pickleball? Uh, Have you heard of pickleball? Well, th- there's certain things I've heard of, and that is not one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. See ya. <laughs>